Hello everybody and welcome back to something completely different. This is the uh, first episode, episode zero. Is uh, for a new series I'll be doing, creating a video game. I did quite a bit already, but I thought maybe I would actually kind of enjoy possibly putting it on the channel. And maybe this will be something I end up changing to a um, live streaming deal because I think it might just be a little bit more make more sense just the kind of style it is since we'll be just, just be kind of like hanging out or just may this could just be background noise for people or maybe there's something that might somebody might get out of it and this is not a tutorial series I should have said that even earlier on <laughs> it's only been less than a minute but you really need to stress that it's not a tutorial series here's a good example right here um, generally with uh, Java programming people use or I think just in general um, they use XML files to you know have load in like um, like uh, stats and stuff to the game I'm using a text file and I'll probably be doing that for literally everything I just like it because it's a little bit more you know everybody knows what a text file is and you can kind of see um, just by looking at these what it takes but this is how I will you could just add new stuff into the game <clears throat> I might give them a lot of um, tags that you could you know like HP and stuff and it will be able to change and the game I mean just change by just adding this in and in the next the video you will see that I created a couple sprites and uh, you're able to just toss them in there by using this and creating them and then making a directory. Another thing too, I probably do my, um, usually they use sprite sheets, people use sprite sheets. I kind of use it as part of how I like to um, load stuff in. I mean, you could still do the same thing with the sprite sheet, but I like the, um, so having individual files for it. it's a little cleaner for me to look at maybe I think I will potentially have and it might become an issue later down the line of how I'm rendering stuff already the only one I'm thinking is like things that need animations like walking animations and stuff um, those I think do make sense to have in the same file where you have them like you know um, walking side to side and stuff but it's like I kind of like having it where I just got them in here so that way all you have to do and that's the biggest reason is that if you're gonna mod the game or like it's gonna be a map editor first and then I'm gonna also add in you know a game but then basically you could make your own map <clears throat> there'll be like a the base game you could save load the RPG and uh but then there'll be a map editor, so you can make your own, and then you can just load that map. And I'm gonna hopefully try and have it so you could enter in, you know, text dialogue and stuff, and there'll be just minimal. Like I don't think there'll be any actual programming. It'll all be just, you know, going through the map editor and then, you know, placing an NPC down, and then like clicking on them, and then like giving them something to say. It'll kind of like step through. We'll see. But having it like this, all you have to do is, like, let's say I created a new NPC character or something. I could just toss them into a folder that's NPCs, and you go in here and just do the path, and then that's it. You don't have to edit any other, you know, sprite file or nothing. Why are these capital PNG? That's bugging me. Hold on, guys. Stop what we're doing. Uh oh, hopefully I didn't fuck something up. Where'd he go? Oh, there it is. Not on my watch. And then, uh... Now, we might go over, like, how to set up a Git uh, repository and stuff. Like I said, I'm trying to just shy away from doing a... Um, trying to shy away from doing an actual tutorial. I wanted it to be kind of like a hanging out, 
and we make video games. Um, nice thing to put in yours would be also to just toss in like a notes document of things you might need to do. It's kind of nice and then if you're using a git repository you could actually have it just transfer between computers. And you can see I got like make buttons and scrollable buttons and scrollable in GUI menu. Create more tiles, duh, that's gonna be always save map. Clean up code and comment. That's probably never gonna happen, I'll be honest with you. Um yeah, I guess let's click click the button. And here you are. The uh game I'm gonna probably have focused in just a little bit more. Like this, I think when I'm but you could have it probably however you want. I might make it so that you could enter in the um like the map editor or whatever you might be able to enter in the sprite size so if you want it like large like this you know when you're playing the game you can but you could actually change between this while you're in the map editor but uh i think just the focus scope <clears throat> when you're creating a game like this it's just a lot of space, especially when you're only one person making a game. Like, let's say, uh, I think this is the standard size it's going to be. This is 64 by 64 sprites. Somewhere around there. I don't know where it ends up after going through the program, but uh, let's say we'd like put some stuff down, right? I need to make that so that you could actually... Uh, <clears throat> uh, let's go like that. Let's put a couple rocks down. And I actually made these rocks in the other episode. I don't know if I said that. This gravel doesn't look like gravel. I like it. But it might need to be like some kind of volcanic something. Alright, let's just extend this off the screen. Well, let's say that I wanted to use this as my normal size, which I think I do kind of like. No, I'll think about it. Um, it's not too bad, right? You add in, you know, some stuff. You have NPCs, buildings, and whatnot. But let's say you zoomed in. And we kind of just... No, I forgot that right shift doesn't do it. Like, you think, I mean, maybe with if this uh, bar here wasn't for, like, in there for the main game, that's where, like, the uh, menu is going to be for selecting tiles. I mean, that might not be too bad. I do kind of like the idea of being kind of close up. Almost kind of like a Game Boy game, right? There's only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tiles on the screen at a time. And it'll make it so that um, your world's kind of smaller, right? Because if you're going, here's kind of what I'm talking about. If you go into, you know, let's say we went back to here. You know, all you have to do is move like this. And you see how much more world you're going through at a time. And this one's not too bad. This is 32 by 30. No, this is 64 by 64. The other one is 128 by 128. Because this is the default. And then... I mean, you could keep going. Well, I guess you can't. <laughs> um, let's say how... I changed how I was going to do this later because I started to think about it. You know, this is the next step up. This is 32 by 32 tiles. This is... Is this actually 16? Hold on. 64, 32, 16. Yeah, and this is what the tiles actually are. And what I... I kind of wanted to do originally, but there's a lot of tiles here. Um... Something I was kind of making a mistake when I was trying to record this video earlier was I was saying that when I went like this, more tiles are going to come on the screen. They actually don't because of how I scaled the game somewhere. Not this scale. I think that's 
Now that might be the skill. Am I using that anywhere? Graphics width and window width. Is this for, uh, yeah, going full screen? That's to keep it. Yeah, so that scales it, so that's what I put in, so that way it will scale with the, um, the graphics. And that's exactly why it won't, uh, what do you call it? When you go from this to full screen, it won't actually increase the amount of tiles on the screen, because it, it just increases the tile sizes to make it look like it's, you know, um, increased. Which is nice, because it's 11920. And you kind of got it out of doing that. So these aren't actually 64. Um, these aren't 64 by 64 uh, sprite or pixel tiles anymore when they're here. Um, they are whatever it would be. With the scaling applied to them. You can kind of just see the issue with... Um, now let's say I did want to do it at the 16 by 16. That's a 16 by 16 sprite right there. It's not actually 16 by 16. So imagine these being even smaller, I think, if I wasn't uh, scaling it to match from my initial windowed resolution to this one. You'd be half in the crew. Um, let me take that out. Like that. So right there we got starting window width is 100 and, or 1024. And we'll do divided by 16. That's 64 tiles. And then 576. 36 tiles. Why did I say 64? So 36 times 64, that's 2,304 tiles on one screen that you need to place down while you're making the map. That's a lot of stuff. And then all you have to do is just move a little bit and then all of a sudden, uh, all that work that you put in that area, it just got, you know, it's just off the screen now. So, zooming in, you could get a lot of, uh, you know, you get to kind of see, there's like a limited scope, and you kind of get a little bit more out of what you're looking at, in my opinion. Because if we do like, uh, you know, 1024 here, and then we divide that by 64, which is the default, it's 16 tiles. I think that counts, but I don't have anything rendering over there. So it actually just goes to here and then just goes here. Where I think if I even, I did click there because I didn't put anything to say I can't yet. But I need to put this down because I got something, an error somewhere where it's saying the grass is all 511. No matter where I click, but see, 13, 14, 15. So... As you can see, you got a lot of, lot less to worry about when you're trying to populate the map. And then if you zoomed in to the next one, like I was saying, as you can see, now you're kind of just a little bit more close and personal. It'll take you a little bit more time to traverse, traverse the map. You could create the map in this, and that's why I left the scaling on, so that way you could get like a, uh, you know, like let's say like in Pokemon, we got like a border of trees. You know, you can kind of go like that. Let's say this is your path in. And let's pretend this gravel is, I don't know. Like a path or something. I don't rename that dash. I'm pretty sure of it now. Go like that. Let's put a little bit of water here. This water is the fucking worst water. I'm gonna redo this water. All right, toss a couple more trees in there. And then you could actually change, you know, some of these out where 
will look weird. And that, I mean, I'll, I'll have a bunch of different tiles to kind of obscure this line, and you could kind of, you know, you know, fill it in like this. I mean, that's just an example. It's kind of like the Pokemon style of kind of forcing you to meander through the map where you could kind of, you know, wrap around and stuff. Even RuneScape's kind of like that. Will block off areas. You know, put like Pokemon, like you could put like something in the way. You know, they will have to obtain something to open it up later. I'm sure there's other games that do that too, but I just mean uh, Pokemon, the Snorlax thing and the trees you need to cut. This a readily available example that you probably might know of. I need to make it so that I can just drag. I specifically made it so you couldn't do that. I'll just take a couple tiles, I mean a couple changes. And then, um... No, so let's uh, zoom in or whatever. Yeah, I zoom out. Need to add a couple things to make it not look so shitty over here. I really like a puddle. I need to add some edge tiles so that way there's a transition or transitional tiles, I guess you might call them, might be better. So this would be like the normal default, I think 64, you go like this. This is what I was telling you about. All right, let's say we put a couple of trees here too, so you kind of go that way. So now you're kind of locked in. You can't go anywhere. All right, let's say you're going to follow this. You can kind of go off the beaten path a little bit. You know, you can't walk through the trees. I mean, there is like a little bit of uh, a loss of kind of the beauty of it at this level because they're just so large there's not much going on on the screen so it's like all right so you see a rock there you see the little bit of water there you could kind of go around the water or whatever but you do kind of lose a little bit of that no it does kind of look nicer a little nicer so this might be the level you never know you could change it if i'm getting like way off and out of the scope of the video for this one because this is episode zero. The... Um, is there much else? I really don't know. Well, I might end it off here, and hopefully, maybe this is something that you guys might be interested in seeing. If it is, make sure you have a like. It does let me know that you want to see some more, and uh. If you like what I do in general, go ahead and leave a. Uh, or if you like what I do in general, go ahead and subscribe. Now this is also a Let's Play channel. I was thinking about putting this on my um other channel. There's not even a channel. It's just a G Gmail account. But obviously the name is already there for the YouTube channel. If you made the Gmail account, and uh, it's uh, Burning Tree Games, which will be my thing I already owned a website and everything I did that five years ago or more uh, I was thinking about putting it on there but it was at the same time it was like having multiple channels is just kind of a pain in the ass it never really works out so say about just keeping it on the same one and I do have on my channel let me see it's been like that forever Don't say nothing. Let's play our gaming magistrate indie game dev and music maker. <laughs> See, it's been there for a long time. I haven't changed that in a while. All right. So I'm going to end up leaving it off here, guys. Nope. That's going to start saying stuff. Um. Yes, that's it. I'll see you guys. Take care. Bye-bye.